CataractCoach.com, resident cataract case with iris hooks. So let's learn from this resident so that you can be adept at using iris hooks also. So starting off with some pupil stretching in both directions. Capsule's already been stained with tripan blue dye. Now viscomedriasis, so that's a reasonable pupil, probably about four millimeters. This is a good time to put in iris hooks, but instead the surgeon wants to do the capsule rexus first. Certainly that's a possibility as well, but the catch is it's harder to visualize the capsule rexus edge because the pupil's not expanded yet. And so used more viscoelastic for the viscomedriasis and even another aliquata viscoelastic and a good capsule rexus has been completed. So now a little bit of hydrodissection is being done there and you can see there's a tendency for iris prolapse and the pupil became small again. So this is probably a good time to say, let's put in some iris hooks. So under a viscoelastic fill, so the anterior chamber is filled with a dispersive viscoelastic, we're now ready to put in the iris hooks. Now a couple of key points here. Number one, because you already have a capsorexis, when you place the iris hooks, make sure they're grabbing just the iris and not inadvertently going around the capsorexis edge. So making four paracentesis incisions, and you can see these are a little bit smaller than typical and they're angled downward. You wanna angle them the same path that you'd use to place the iris hook. So not parallel to the iris plane, but rather angling down. Here are the four iris hooks being placed. Now this is being placed in a square pattern. Some surgeons advocate placing all five hooks in a pentagon pattern, or some use just four, but do it in a diamond pattern. So having one hook directly beneath the phaco incision. Any of these arrangements is acceptable. And you see the technique here is once the, the hook's in the eye, to get it around the edge of the iris, the pupil margin, and then pull the hook and then pull down the stay collar right down to the limbus. And then once you have all four in, you can adjust their position a little bit and even adjust their tension to make it just a little bit tighter, a little bit larger. Now we can see there's the caps rexus, which was done very nicely, beautiful rexus. And it's nice big pupil opening that was been made here. There's the fifth hook. There you go. There's the pentagon shape in the sub-incisional area. Now that's helpful so the phaco probe doesn't get caught with the sub-incisional iris tissue. So there's the lens, nice good density, phaco probe going in, here's the second instrument cleaning this up, and it looks like a good groove right down the middle. Very reasonable technique here. Get a nice central groove and this nucleus can then be split into two halves, and then each half can be sub-chopped into smaller pieces and brought up towards the iris plane. Now we're obviously watching this video sped up. This is at four times normal speed. And the reason is I wanna show you the whole video to show all the little nuances. And this is uh, at four times speed, we'll see the whole thing. And I think you can get a good idea of what's going on here. Nucleus is out, that looks great. Filling up the capsule bag with a little viscoelastic just to keep the AC formed. And now going in with the IA probe. With the IA probe, gonna remove lens cortex and from all around. And that looks really good. So nice technique here with the iris hooks. It does take more time. This patient has five iris hooks in the eye. Very important that you keep track of these and don't lose them. In some operating rooms, these are treated as if they're needles or other important devices. And if you lose them, you have to do a big hunt for them. So there's a good fill of viscoelastic. Time to get the IOL. The IOL will be placed in the capsule bag. And then the, when's the best time to remove the hooks? Well, these hooks, you should keep them in here for the lens insertion to make sure the eye wall goes in the caps or bag. And the best time to take them out is after the eye wall is in the bag and before you remove viscoelastic because now it's easy to remove. So you unhook them. There's another secret move you can do here. Just grab the iris hook and just give it a quick tug. Because the hook is flexible, it'll just release the iris and come right out of the eye. That's the shortcut method. The regular method is what you're seeing here, which is pulling the collar back and then unhooking the iris and coming out of the eye slowly. And that looks great. Time to remove the viscoelastic. I think this is a great case. Now, one more point at the end here. You take out all that viscoelastic, let's make sure you don't have any leakage. Remember, you've got your main phaco incision, plus your paracentesis incision, plus in this case, five more small incisions to place the iris hooks. 
So you need to check all of them and make sure that they're all watertight. So in this case, there's seven incisions to check. Yes, five of them are very tiny, less than a millimeter, but let's make sure we check all of them. You saw the releasing of the pressure there, flattening out the anterior chamber to prevent RS prolapse, also loosening the speculum. Now hydrate and seal the incisions, and now you can go back and inflate the eye and get it at a normal anterior chamber depth, as well as physiologic pressure. Nice case. Thank you for submitting it. I sincerely appreciate it.